everyone, and we are on with Pete Gustas. What is happening, my brother? It's another exciting day to, to be an entrepreneur, as always. <laughs> exactly. How about yourself? Good, 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 good. All good, all good. Um, yeah, having great conversations today with people, and <clears throat> glad to be connecting with you today. And maybe we can start with like a little bit of background about like uh, Pete and like, you know, a little bit about where your background, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I've been in sales for quite some time. That's been my focus. And of course, I'm also interested in entrepreneurship. But as far as a progression, um, maybe like most people, I started just um, with regular jobs and I kept building myself up. Uh, eventually, somebody said, hey, do you want to get a sales job? And that led me to um, apply at a car dealership. Very uh, my first year, actually, I became an internet sales manager and one of the top 10 in the nation with Honda internet sales, which was great. Um, from there in the real estate, the economy crashed, but I've been sticking with it the whole time. But like yourself, I'm an entrepreneur. Despite the fact that I work for a company, probably I've decided to um, take brokerage classes to start my own brokerage, and I'm still working on my other goals. Um, so I had been told by somebody else I need to focus because I have maybe a little bit of ADD because I come up with all these ideas and I'm like okay but then there's all time motivation um, sometimes I don't always have the energy you know so um, that's one of those things so I'm working right. on goals and trying to just do what I can so I hear you man and so where, where are you from Pete where were you born and like raced in and stuff and Oh, well, uh, my father's side of the family's from Lithuania. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, they own a farm in Naringal, which is not far from where I'm now. And my mother's side's from Okinawa, Japan. So uh, I was born in Las Vegas. If you're in a military, <laughs> family, they actually have you move every two or three years. So two of my brothers and sisters were born in Okinawa. My brother was born in Georgia. I was born in Las Vegas. Uh, so it, it's good because you get an opportunity to travel all over the place. Some people who aren't used to it, they they think it's unusual or uncomfortable. But that when you grow up that way, it's actually nice to be able to see the world. Um, when I came to Pennsylvania, I met a lot of people who did not travel. And actually, a lot of people who didn't even leave the county they lived in. To me, that was shocking because you would talk to people. And to them, like New York on TV is a fictional place. That didn't even exist. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it's sad to say that, but unfortunately, when you talk to them, they're almost like, yeah, that's not real. But, you know, so it's good for people to be able to see the rest of the world and know how things are. Definitely important. Yeah, man. I was just, I just got off the phone call yesterday, actually. Yesterday, I was in a phone call with a lady. And yeah, she was mentioning like, you know, I've never left, I've only been to Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and that's about as much as I've been to. And I've met multiple people like that too. And, and they always, you know, for somebody who doesn't want to desire like to go, that's okay too. But a lot of people do desire. And I mean, the world, it's amazing. Didn't you just come back from Japan? Yeah, I took a, a, took a trip to Okinawa. So I haven't been there in quite some time. Um, uh, I think my left when I was in first grade, um, I had an opportunity to go back about 20 years ago, but I didn't take it. I should have. And then of course, um, you know, sometimes I always say if, if you have the desire and you want a way, just pray and it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is I was thinking about going, um, I was searching, then all of a sudden it came up that there was round trip tickets for like $700, which was dirt cheap. Previous to that, I couldn't find a ticket cheaper than 14. And then sometimes I would not look, look a couple days later and that would be like 1800. And then I was like, crap, it was just 1400 the other day, what's happening? All of a sudden I looked and it was 700 some change. So I was like, if I don't go now, I'm completely an idiot. So I just <laughs> bought the tickets right away. And of course, left. Um, so it was pretty cool. So 14 days. It was it was definitely fun. Wow, man. What was one of? Uh, and so I was wondering, like, yeah, what was your connection with with Asia? And now, of course, I know. Um, and how was the trip? How was the trip? Like, you know, seeing the cultures and how was the trip for you, man? 
Yeah, definitely very good. You know, the one thing I would always recommend, and maybe it's something that I should have did too, is um, I didn't know know this, but when you buy the tickets and uh, to go to Japan, there's actually two airports that are about an hour away from each other. I had to take a bus from one airport to the other. But, you know, I bought the tickets real quick. I was told it's common. So if you're aware of that, that's fine. If you don't understand what's going on, you can definitely lose uh, your ticket or, or miss the flight that you have to go to, even though it's a collect connecting flight. Um, the things that I, I learned that I, that I liked is Google Translate works great. I know I used it before I went on the trip, but what ended up happening is, um, as far as Google Translate, you can download any language. I actually used it in the past um, well, a lot of people think I look Spanish, but I actually sold house to um, people that spoke Spanish and did not speak English with Google Translate. So using that for travel, as well as using it for business, it, it actually is a great tool. Um, so that's one of the things I use. A lot of people had said, hey, Pete, how'd you go to Japan? You, we know you don't speak you know, Japanese. Well, I did bring my mother because she's family, of course. But when I was not with her, it was very easy to use Google Translate. You know, simple phrases, any country, practically any country, you can use it if you're traveling and it, it makes sense. Uh, me personally, I like food. Um, Japanese food, Okinawan food, it's actually pretty good to me. For me, most of it I would have to say I like, uh, even though I'm a picky eater. So for a lot of people who like traveling, they like that type of thing. Um, I think it's a, it's a good experience. Hmm. That's all right, man. That's so crazy. Because yesterday I had in one of my projects, we have in a in a, a little uh, project in Haiti with one of the orphanages down there in Haiti. And usually we have a translator in the video conference and another doctor. And so, and I'm usually in the background trying to make sure everything's smooth. And the translator wasn't there. And the other doctor wasn't there. And the nurse only speaks uh, Haitian Creole. And I was yeah. like, Google Translate, baby. Let's go, you know, and it's amazing, man. I was able to get through the visit and, uh, you know, I mean, it's not perfect, but you can get through a lot. And so it's amazing nowadays. I mean, we have this aid. It's like a translator in our pocket, man. It's amazing, right? Yeah, definitely works good. Well, when you're looking at it, if it's not exactly perfect, which sometimes it's not, but the other person generally will know what you're talking about. They'll be able exactly. to figure it out. And it goes the same way when it translates back to English. Sometimes you'll say, well, this doesn't totally make sense, but then you can figure out what's going on. So Yeah, yeah, you can definitely. And then you kind of distill the language down to the basics. Like what's the main point this person is trying to get and what's the yeah. main point they're trying to get. And most of the times you can kind of get through it. Uh, that's, 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 that's cool, man. And, uh, it, it, Pete, and so when you were kind of getting employment and everything, like all the jobs that you mentioned, when was the, like the chip that started like saying like, Hey, you know what? Like I need to be an entrepreneur. What happened? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's always, <clears throat> I, I've told other people, I'm going to turn off my phone. So one second that it's always like a stepping stone, no matter what you do. Um, so I've always looked at those type of things. Um, like, you know, when I decided to get serious about maybe working and making a better life for myself, um, you know, I just got a job instead of doing nothing. Everyone would like to be a millionaire right away, of course, but it's not a reality. So um, then after I started working, I just decided to do my best at what I was doing and then look for something else, you know. So a lot of people are saying, hey, you're successful at real estate. You should, you know, do this or do that or relax more. But I want to get to a point in my life where entrepreneurship can allow me to have the freedom I want. So that's why I'm actually pursuing it because as a solopreneur, of course, if I don't sell a house this month, I'm not going to have a paycheck at the end of the month. So I'm looking for something that's going to allow me to basically um, have a steady flow of income. If I want to take time off, it's not going to affect me too much. So that's the basics for entrepreneurship. Always looking for something more, you know, it's opportunity. For sure, man. And when you were, <clears throat> so when you went from, would you say that it was like when you were holding the job and then when you took the sales job, would you say that that started kind of putting ideas or did you always kind of wanted to be do, own your own business and, and, and either selling houses or this or like, when was, when did it start to kind of playing up here? Like, 
I'm gonna go from a steady job into my own. Did that? How did that transition start happening? Yeah. Well, see, one of the things is when I when I was working, a lot of the jobs I always have done were labor jobs, and maybe it's my own fault for not looking as much, but or maybe it could have been the area I was in because an area the area where I grew up, Schuylkill County, the economy is very low. So you know, even twenty or twenty years ago. Um, a decent job might be like nine or ten dollars an hour, which in my opinion was pretty pathetic. Um, so when you're looking at the class of people, I didn't totally understand how sales positions were and how commissions always got paid for those type of jobs. So I didn't really seek them out. Um, but when I was younger, my mom had a flower shop. So I helped her out a lot of times. I kind of understood that. And that's actually what luckily got me into sales. Because what ended up happening is um, when I went back to doing labor jobs and I was working in a warehouse, one of the people who knew my mom said, hey, you should get into auto sales. And, and that's what got me into sales. And I said, well, I don't know if I you know, could do that. I never did that. Even though I did some small things like door-to-door -door sales, like a lot of college people do. You see all those ads, Cutco and stuff like that. And he said, well, what do you mean? You're, you help your mom. You've done all these other small things you mentioned. And I said, they said that auto sales is the same thing, except you're selling cars. You know, No matter what you're doing in life, you're really selling. Um, even if you're working at a job and saying, well, I'm not really selling. If you're not selling yourself as a warehouse worker, you're going to get fired. <laughs> you might not consider yourself saying, I'm, somebody's exchanging you know, or giving me money for something, you're moving boxes. If you're not moving boxes, you know, you're going to be out, out the door. So that's why I always like to say every job's a sales job. It's just what you're doing and what you're selling, you know. Absolutely, man. And like in the healthcare field, I think, uh, you know, it's been amazing to realize how much sales has to do with personal transformation or overcoming a chronic disease because sales has to do a lot with like breaking down limiting beliefs, you know, that people have. And it's almost like we have to sell ourselves into like a new version of ourselves. Like, yes. Hey, this is the next version of myself that like, I'm not obese or the next version of myself that I'm not depressed. The next version of myself that I don't have to have, if I have type two diabetes to like, that I don't have, that I don't have it anymore. Like you're selling yourself, breaking those limiting beliefs. Um, yeah. And so I, it's been so intriguing to be able to put the two together. And it's like, you know, it's amazing. It's like healing in a way. Um, uh, and, and, and it wasn't until I heard this guy that was a great salesman uh, from actually from Garrett's White, uh, one of the main guys, uh, if, if anybody listening out there is the warrior uh, uh, movement, but he's one of the sales guys from that place. And he talked, he sees himself as a healer. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, like that's so interesting, man, because you're really putting people from one place to another being, you know, owning a car or a house or owning themselves, like whatever it is, you're helping them through a transition, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's life. Everything's transitioning to something else. If it's, if you're deciding you're not, that's your own call. But, you know, if you want to get anywhere, you got to make change and you got to deal with your personal problems or whatever's holding you back. Yep. Yeah, man. And, uh, and, and then when you started learning about, so you knew a little bit of sales from working in the flower shop and then in the car industry, right? And then yes. what decided to go like, hey, I'm going to go like get my real estate license because that mm -hmm. must have been a process too, right? Yeah. Well, real estate license is not that difficult. Um, <clears throat> I didn't understand the process, but I was doing very well at the auto dealership. And oh, that's um, right. Basically, I started managing a, a small team. And what happened is one of the team members actually said, hey, you know, the real estate market's so big, you should switch into real estate. And I was like, okay, this guy's trying to get me out of here so he can take my job. <laughs> so, and he said, my wife works for Century 21. She's a manager, you should go. And I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, but then, you know, maybe, maybe every guy has a weakness and he said, oh, they have these big parties. It's free alcohol and all you can eat and drink. And I was like, yeah, you know, I got time. <laughs> so I went and I don't want to say it was exactly like the Wolf of Wall Street, but it was pretty 
that was pretty crazy. They had a Wolf of Wall Street party later, with, but if we if we talk about that, we'll get into that. So what, I went to the party, um, and then all of a sudden, I met all these people who said they have no idea how to sell anything. They never did this before, and people are telling me they're making 45000 65000 75000 and they literally said, I don't even know what I'm doing. And I said, this is insane. Uh, because back in the time, like 05, 06, 07, I guess the real estate market was picking up and it was getting so big that um, you really, if anybody could speak, they would just approve them for a loan. So, um, and, the, and they showed me these other uh, pay stubs, which was kind of bad because they were trying to entice me to come in and they were like, hey, look, this one person made $30,000 in one month. This other person you know, he made 10,000. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Um, so I got my real estate license. And um, since I was busy, I actually didn't really do anything. And then one of my clients said, hey, Pete, I'm moving. I don't know if, what I have to do with my lease car. Am I allowed to take it? And, and then I, I told them they could. Then they told me they were having problems with a real estate agent. Uh, back then, real estate agents, maybe they didn't need to worry about customer service or being nice or anything. But I said, well, what's the problem? course as a salesperson I always try to diagnose the issue and he said well you know most of these real estate agents they work nine to five and he said if I want help I need to take off work and, and leave early and I said are you freaking kidding me <laughs> um, me being in auto sales if you called and said you wanted to buy a car I wouldn't say well you know what I only work till five you just tell your job you have to buy a car so you got to leave um, I think that was pretty bold, but apparently I was told that a lot of real estate agents had that attitude and a lot of people were actually listening to them. So I actually told uh, the client, hey, you know me, I'm just letting you know, first of all, I'm not a full-time real estate agent. Next of all, I don't mind helping you when I'm done. So I said, I'm, I'm going to be done at X amount of time, which I don't remember exactly what time, and I'll be happy to meet you after work. So he agreed. Um, we listed his property. I was so busy, I really didn't have time to do anything because of course I was full-time auto sales. And then coincidentally, once I stopped into the office, somebody called, picked up the phone, and they said they were interested in buying it. I sold the property and I was like, wow, these people are right. This was so easy. It was much easier than auto sales. And then I made a transition um, in, in the spring. And that's the spring, the market crash. Actually, I transitioned one month before the market crashed. <laughs> wow. So, And how was that, man? Yeah, I would say very challenging, you know, because <laughs> at first I was doing what probably somebody shouldn't do, and that was because of a lack of experience. You know, a lot of times, uh, well, now that I'm older and have been doing real estate for a while and learned more about entrepreneurship, um, they say it's a good idea to get a mentor. But what happened is a lot of real estate agents said, oh, this is only going to last a month. Don't worry about it. And, oh, you know, that's by summer, this is going to be done. But the market, of course, crashed, as you all know, and it lasted quite some time. And um, at the time, I just listened to what people told me. So the first year was a struggle. But after that first year of struggle, I said to myself, you know, all the people that don't know anything and that I'm taking advice from, they really don't know anything. So actually that's when I decided to go back into what I call the basics. And I said, hey, whatever I was doing in sales with auto sales and internet sales management, I'm just gonna do that with real estate. It's a, you know, sales, same methods, just a different product. And actually that's what started turning my uh, business around. But as, as what, far as business, you know, we're in a dynamic world. We all know that. Everything keeps changing. You know, when I started years ago, there's no Facebook. Um, then, of course, you know, they had, they had MySpace. Everything keeps changing no matter what we do. This, the past, I would say, 15 years, it's just you got to keep your eyes focused and then say, I'm now going to look to the side. Whatever is going to be new or different, I have to decide if this is going to be something I need to get involved in because that's we're in a dynamic world yeah yeah for sure man we are yeah and everything changes i i, I keep always thinking about uh when i was in business school there um they, they show this graph of uh the what they call the discontinuity curve that 
that every technology ends. The phone, the you know, the land phone. I remember, I don't know if you've ever had them. Like, yeah. You know that they yeah, we end. All did. And so, so everything ends. And so in every... In, in the same with ourselves, like reinventing ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. reinventing ourselves and not being afraid of taking that next step, creating that next version of ourselves. Uh, and that's what it kind of takes to be always engaged with life, I think, in a way, because it keeps you on your toes. And I know that, like, I, uh, you've run for mayor and stuff, right? Before? Oh, yeah, yeah. How, how, yeah. Just on the <laughs> side, you know, I mean, yeah. so how is that? Just something to do while <laughs> bored. Um, you know, I... I I moved into a community called West <laughs> Reading, and it's a pretty nice community, but with the downturn of the economy, we have a main street. Um, you know, this is might be a bad thing to say, but a lot of times I think elections are not always the best thing or the way governments run in Pennsylvania is not always the best because right. um, I actually went to some meetings because I was a little upset and I said, well, why are things happening this way? Or why is this being run this way? And the one guy said, well, you know, I lived here my whole life and I have the best intentions. And I said, well, a lot, the best intentions are sometimes the, the pathway to hell. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. I also said, well, what, um, you know, experience do you have that you're voting on laws that are affecting our community? And the person said he has none, you know, and I'm not saying you have to go to college, but he said he didn't graduate college and he just has a regular job and I said oh crap you know that's in my opinion not always the best thing and I'm not saying you got to go to college don't get me wrong I actually only completed one year of college because I broke and dislocated my shoulder but you know still that doesn't mean I'm gonna try to run for council and then make decisions that are gonna affect everybody in the community or change laws that are gonna affect business when I actually never ran a business that's probably a bad idea when you have people who are voting on rules about how business should be run when they never did it you know it's just in my opinion probably a very bad idea so I, I ran for mayor to try to correct some problems and unfortunately I lost I don't want to get into all the details the gory details of the election but um, I think in the end things did turn out for the best because some of the ideas that they had, they did not see through maybe because I was there. Like one of the ideas that, that uh, some of the people had was to plant fruit trees all over the neighborhood. And so when I went to the meeting, you know, I guess in a perfect world, maybe it makes sense, but they said, Hey, if we plant fruit trees, they will uh, be nice people. Anybody can just pick the fruit. And I said, well, that sounds like a fantasy from, you know, Adam and Eve. I said, I grew up on a farm. If you have fruit trees all over the place, the fruit's going to fall. It's going to attract rodents. <laughs> Trust me here. <laughs> you know, I don't see a utopian world where everybody, whatever, and smiling and picking fruit. And I, it just, I don't see it, you know. I, I see rats and I see... Uh, a lot of rodents. <laughs> so, they never put the fruit trees up. So maybe my mission was accomplished. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy because after living in Hawaii, um, uh, the, I realized that, that yeah, the, the, the amount of flies and, you know, if you're not having a consistent a system picking up the fruits and everything, um, you know, in a controlled way, uh, is going to create more problems than what you have you know because because people can't eat 300 you know 400 apples you know, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah um, yeah and, and and but but i think that's amazing that you did that because a lot of times we feel the same in health like we feel like we can't do anything about it we feel like uh all oh, these people are meeting over there and i don't have a say in the table and i think i've heard i went to lobby one time uh, with these guys uh, for doctors for issues that and then, so we were in Washington DC and the guy who put this whole group together he had built a pretty large company and an amazing company and he said to me he said hey man if you're not a part of the conversation you're a part of the meal and he started mm. laughing and I said to myself you're right man and so sometimes said, yeah sometimes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and 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 I realized that like the empowerment like 
okay, like I have the power to change my health or to change my whole community um, or to change my business life. That, that's such a big factor. So just you taking that leap of like, hey, I'm going to, this guy, like he doesn't have any education. I finished a year of college. He doesn't know anything about business. I know business. Uh, and so why not try to solve some problems, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of being like, oh, you know, these people over there, like you try to to be a part of the solution, you know? Yes. Yep. Uh, and 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 then uh, and so, um, Pete, what's what's uh, what's what's next for you? Um, you know, in the what's next for you in your projects and everything? Yeah. Well, there's the the idea of focusing. So I'm building a a site that's going to be developed to sell uh, CBD products. I want to start a CBD uh, manufacturing company. Um, I also am writing a book about real estate and I'm going to offer a short term, like a real estate coaching program. That's going to be very inexpensive. And the reason is to get people from starting real estate uh, because it's actually difficult. It's easy to get in, but then I find that you, there's typically no support once you get in. And that's why there's such a high risk of failure in that business. Um, so those are the two things I'm focused on. And I actually recently found a real estate uh, school that actually said one day a week for a year and I'll be able to get a broker's license. So I'll work on that very soon, probably starting uh, in the winter and then hopefully finish that in one year and then set up a brokerage. Uh, the idea really is entrepreneurship and moving up, you know, I'm always trying to work on achieving goals. So that's basically it. Very that's quick. Awesome, man. And so, um, and then the, so the book in real estate, and then a course yeah. that goes along with that book to teach people everything you've learned and how yes. to do it now. Uh, and then also, um, the, 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 your broker's license, you said, yes. you use brokerage in, uh, and, and then in between real estate and brokerage, how will that, what's the difference there? Uh, well, see, as a broker, you have your own company. So as a real estate agent, sorry, sorry. as a real estate agent, you basically have the um, only option is to work for a brokerage. When you have your own brokerage, you're completely um, independent. So you could do, well, have your own company, make all your own rules. You don't have to worry about anyone and you can hire somebody. Um, so it, it's all you. I'm to the point that there's nothing wrong with the company. That's why I went to an independent, but I'd rather just have everything that I have to handle myself, nobody to answer to, and basically just handle my own business however I want to. Oh, that's so. awesome, man. And then the CBD part of things, uh, has was there anything that kind of sent you in that road or uh, was there anything specific? Yeah. Well, when you're looking at it, it's always been a, a challenge because when I grew up, my father actually was very strict, barely drank. I was in the D.A.R.E. program. So when, when I was in that program, pro I was probably brainwashed by the school. <laughs> you know, it's bad to have to say that because you trust school to educate yourself and the kid, your children. But then when you grow up and you're like, oh, marijuana actually is not bad for you. You know, I've, somebody said if you smoke it, you're going to start murdering everybody. Um, and then you realize that there's actually health benefits to it, um, that it kind of changes your life. And you're like, well, why would, some, why would they teach me all this stuff and tell me everything's bad when it actually is not bad, you know? So right now in, in uh, Pennsylvania, they pass a farm bill. Um, I have a warehouse, so what I really want to do is uh, produce CBD, which can help people with all types of ailments. Um, you know, kids with seizures, other people with uh, health disorders, uh, people with Parkinson's disease, a lot of different type of stuff. They, they can actually be help, helped. And what they have said is that the human body has an endocannabinoid system. And I'm not sure how this is a recent discovery, but apparently it is. Um, obviously, I'm not a biologist. I'm not studying the human body. But recently, they said they've discovered this and find that our body produces cannabinoids. And taking CBD actually increases our body's uh, reception and helps with a lot of health problems that people have. So it's natural. A lot of times they, and keep in mind, you're 
you can't get medical advice for not doing that right now. It's actually illegal according to the FDA, but people who take CBD products, uh, typically I've seen YouTube videos and discussions where they've reduced and or eliminated medications they, they've taken. Um, so there's a benefit to this, you know, it's not just uh, me saying, hey, hopefully I can do this and make money. It's actually helping people. And in life, if you're helping people, it's a, it's a great thing. I always felt that way. And that's one of the reasons why I actually got into sales and got into it with Hondas because I liked Hondas more than other cars. I felt that they were reliable and great. And I said, well, if I'm going to sell something, I got to sell something I believe in. If I don't believe in, I don't want to do it, you know? Um, so real estate's great. I, I've helped a lot of people, but I'm to the point of like, okay, I got to bring my income to the next level. Um, so I, I always stick with stuff that I believe have a true belief in. Yep. Cool, man. And has it changed? Um, marijuana, has it changed in some way? Has it helped you? Uh, you know, some people do it for like anxiety or pain or just relaxation. Or, of course, you know, everything like that debate is such a big debate. But for some people, like if you overdo it, of course, it gives you like um, uh, the motivational syndrome and things like that. But but a lot of people, it helps them in so many different ways. Has it helped you in different ways? Or? Yep. Well, as far as me, I never applied for a medical permit because you can get a medical license for med medical marijuana in Pennsylvania. Um, but when you're looking at that type of thing, anybody who has symptoms for something that they think they could get a benefit from, if it's medical marijuana, they do need to make sure it's legal in their state. For CBD, you just buy it online. But also with CBD and medical marijuana, there's typically different cannabinoids and the, the type of profile of the product you're purchasing, it actually has different effects. Um, and every person's a little bit different. So if you go and you find something that's supposed to be for anxiety, it works for most people, but it doesn't necessarily work for every person. And sometimes you might take a certain type of variety that actually might make your anxiety feel worse. So, um, I'm not saying it's trial and error because you can do research and find stuff that's more suited. Like people have certain types of pains, they that certain types of strains might be recommended. Um, but for me personally, I'm not actually taking anything. Um, I do take some CBD on occasion um, just because I've tried various products. Like I made a product for weight loss with, with CBD in it. Um, and I try to trial run, but the bad thing is um, I probably did the worst thing that anyone could do when they're doing a trial run. When I manufactured it for myself, I was like, hey, this is great. But then when I tried the trial run, I was like, well, to give this away for free, it's going to cost me like $500. So I got to make it cheaper. And that was a bad idea because I tried to make um, a whole bunch of batches and give it to people. But I didn't make it exactly how I made my own. And people said they didn't like it. Um, some people said it didn't work. But I think most people actually didn't try the product because it definitely would work. <laughs> gotcha, man. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it, 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 you're, you're, you're hitting so many points. Um, I interviewed actually in my YouTube channel a lady. Uh, I met her in uh, San Francisco, I think, and she was like 90 something. And she tried so many things for pain. And the only thing that would work was CBD oil. You know, yeah. we didn't give her any of the side effects or anything. So, for her, it was amazing for joint pain. Also, I remember a guy, uh, I had a guy in the hospital just recently, man. He had hip surgery and we didn't want to go up on the narcotics that he would use. And a lot of the hospitals don't have CBD, any type of products in their formulary yet to be able to prescribe. And so mm. his wife went to a local naturopathic doctor and he got, and, and got some CBD uh, for him. And it was amazing, man. He didn't even ask for any of the narcotics anymore while he was recovering from hip surgery. So um, definitely a lot of benefits. And then the last point that you touched on was is pretty interesting because it makes me think of epigenetics and uh, pharmacogenomics, which yeah. is actually testing people's gene profile to the profile of the pharmacological uh, uh, substance that they're about to use. So before I give you like any blood pressure medication, in the future, the way it's running is that I would test all your genes and see if the genetic profile with you would work with this specific uh, uh, medication 
And then, oh yeah, if this specific medication has worked in people who have, you know, this specific type of genetic profile a hundred times. So we're pretty sure that this is probably gonna work for you. Uh, and then methylation medicine is pretty cool too, because you can start noticing how people's genes react to like something like CBD or how it was made. You know, different substances are put in them. And yeah. so, yeah, definitely we're all different and we all have different like expressions to different substances. So uh, that's why like the testing is so important and being able to figure out how to make the, the way that you make it and that is compatible to the people that uh, that uh, that get used to from it. Um, yep. Yeah, it's such an interesting the, the endocannabinoid system and how it's not being really used uh, yet and, and legislated or studied well, and, and not a lot of people are using it when it has so many benefits, you know. Yes, yep, yeah, man, good deal, Pete. So that was great, man. Good, 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 good talking to you and uh, look forward to seeing your book when it comes out on real estate. Uh, yes. That'll be interesting for sure. Uh, and then uh, all your amazing projects, man. We're thanks. Yeah. And thanks for coming in here and chatting up, man. Sounds good. <laughs> nice seeing you, Andres. Yeah, same here, brother. Have a great day. Okay, man. You too.